Apex Legends Arsenal is dropping tomorrow, May 9th, and here are all the patch notes that you need to know. Let's start with a crucial component to the weapon mastery system. Now, if you didn't know, there's a new weapon progression system, which I covered in a previous video, but everyone wants to know when you reach level 100 and master the weapon, do you get a unique legendary skin for that weapon or do you just get a legendary weapon pack? And the answer is you will get a legendary pack for now. They haven't made any unique skins for this, but one of the devs used the word not yet. And I guess that would imply eventually there will be a unique skin for mastering each weapon. But yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, let's talk about some of the weapon changes. The L-Star is going into the care package and the RE45 is coming out to ground loot. There was no mention of this in the patch notes, but I'll assume that the hammer point is still on the ground in season 17. So I would guess it can still be equipped to the RE as it previously could before it went into the care package. The L-Star is going to have disruptor rounds equipped. The damage is going to be reduced from 17 to 16. The projectile growth is increased. This means the bullet spread is going to be larger, but the recoil is getting improved. It will spawn with 324 ammo and they have removed the barrel stabilizer from it and they have reduced the VFX brightness when hitting unarmored targets. The 3030 is receiving a small change. The projectile size is increased when fully charged. The triple take is seeing a projectile size increase, improved hip fire spread, tightened bullet pattern when fully choked, and the ammo per shot is reduced to one. It previously was three. Magazine sizes are going to be adjusted to match the new ammo costs. Purple mag is basically increased to 10 shots as it was previously nine shots. Now we all know the R99 was insane in season 16 and after they buffed the damage by one, they're now removing one bullet from the base and all other magazines. So an R99 with no magazine will have its ammo reduced from 20 down to 19. The problematic charge rifle is getting its shots reduced from four down to three, and they are reducing its spawn rate. This is a huge change and hopefully it'd be enough to make this gun not as rampant in season 17. Okay, moving on to some of the legends. Catalyst, with her ultimate, the Dark Veil, scan highlights and diamonds, AKA Sears ultimate, are no longer going to be visible through the Dark Veil. Mirage has had his class change from Skirmisher to Support, and Ash now gets slowed to weapon sprint speed instead of weapon walk speed when targeting with her tactical. I think this is a small but good change for Ash as it slightly buffs her tactical. There were some other legend changes, but they were listed under bug fixes, but some of them I think are huge. First up for Ash, steps are no longer louder if her heirloom is equipped. Her ultimate will now persist for the entire duration, even if Ash dies while it is active and while players are still traveling through it. For Bloodhound, White Ravens already in flight can no longer be scanned for free tacticals and ult charges. For Caustic, they fixed this bug where traps were destroying when placed near closed doors that are then opened. So you try to block a door, an enemy would open the door and the trap would just disappear completely. For Loba, they fixed the amount of head peek over cover while crouching. They adjusted it to match the other legends. Loba had this weird bug where if she was crouched behind cover, it was showing like much more of her body than it was supposed to. For Mad Maggie, they improved the reliability when hitting objects that the ball will damage or destroy. I don't want to read too much into this, but I hope this means that her ultimate is much better now and won't just randomly bounce off something and stun Maggie or stun her teammates. It doesn't mention anything about the stunning, but the ball was pretty awkward and I've talked about that many times before. For Wraith, they fixed the ultimate being usable while ziplining. And there's just a few other bug changes, but none of them were that big of a deal in my opinion. But I will link the patch notes in the description of this video if you guys want to read further. I just wanted to cover the ones that I thought were most prominent. Now, most of the legend classes receive some changes. So starting off with the assault class, smart loot gains have been adjusted to reduce skipping an upgrade tier. So now it'll be less likely to jump from white to purple or blue to gold. This is a slight nerf in my opinion. But regardless, optics are now given based on team rather than just the assault legend who opened them. They added special drop rate for gold optics and the skirmisher class now will automatically ping the care package for the team on reveal. This was like a small but subtle thing I noticed, especially if I was solo queuing. If a player pinged the package, the teammates would then know what was in it. But if they just looked at it and that player got the information, they would have to ping it to reveal that to teammates. This will also include empty care packages that have already been looted by another team. For the support class, support bins will now guarantee at least one shield battery in one of the secret compartment slots. 
Support bins will also now spawn mobile respawn beacons if your ally is dead, even if you don't have their banner card. And legend banners can now be crafted by any player who has a support class legend in their squad. This is huge. This is actually a really huge buff to the support class as a whole, as I think it makes running one way more viable. And it's probably Apex's way of saying, we got to get these pick rates up, baby. The mixed day playlist received some small but important updates. First for control, Barometer is out and Olympus Hammond Labs is in. When your gun would level up every time that you got a new rating tier, it would actually like holster your gun then pull it back out. It would do this weird animation. And if you were in the middle of a fight, it could cost you your life. So now it will upgrade the weapon at any point of reloading, weapon switching, holstering, riding a zip line, skydiving, anything like that. So this is a small but really helpful change for control. For team deathmatch, Skull Town is out and Phase Runner is back in. When you would kill an enemy player and their armor would fall on the floor, it would always be empty. So now it should be fully shielded up so you can actually armor swap in the mixtape game mode now. This is a huge change. It's nice to know this was a bug and not something done with intention, but this should make the game more enjoyable. And there was a few other quality of life updates that they made to mixtape. But one important quality of life update that they made overall in the game was they made it so that the bullet impact VFX on snow has now been reduced. If you have ever been shooting in the snow, like an epicenter or some places on World's Edge, the snow would kick up and really just block your screen entirely. It was really tough to see enemies. So they fixed this or maybe they reduced it. I'm not sure how much of it is fixed, but that is some great news. They also fixed the prowler bug that was not aiming down sights when you were crouching. This is another small but huge change that I'm looking forward to. Regarding the weapon crafting, gold weapons, and loot spawns, the alternator is entering the crafter along with the sentinel, so that means the EVA 8 and the 3030 are returning to the floor loot. For the gold weapon rotation, it is going to be flatline, triple take, spitfire, mastiff, and vault. And for the vault loot, they increased the chances of gold loot, they added light mags to the spawn pool, and they're improving the cargo bot loot. So they've removed small healing items, mobile respawn beacons, white armors, and white backpacks from this. They've adjusted the large healing and heat shield spawns to allow for more desirable loot spawns. And they've removed gold weapons from purple tier cargo bots, but increased the spawn chance in a gold tier. So make sure you time that cargo bot right and you probably will get a gold weapon it sounds like. And one of my favorite changes that I covered in my previous video, but now I have a good image to show you, is the update to the ping wheels. You'll now see three new pings, avoid area, enemy audio, and a regrouping ping. And you're gonna see an expanded set of options when you're downed or when you're in the drop ship. They don't have pictures of that, but this is a really good quality of life update to the ping wheel. If you guys missed my previous uploads regarding all of the new changes coming to Apex Legends Arsenal, check out these videos next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in season 17. Peace.